Good evening. Welcome to the Maysville Church of Christ in Christian Union on this November 27th p.m. service. We are giving you a special prepared live stream service with Christmas music from another year and from a message preached just this weekend. So enjoy the service. I do want to tell you some things that you should um, start expecting as you join us either in-house, which we hope you will, or join us online. We want you to know that through the work of Dr. David Jeremiah, there is a new movie, Why the Nativity? And we're going to be uh, being influenced, or um, I guess you would say we have studied the materials from Dr. David Jeremiah to add to the arsenal of Bible studying that we have done over our entire life. And we're going to be planning some sermons along the line of why about the nativity. And I also want you to know that in the morning services, you will want to expect uh, some sisters and brothers to be bringing moments that people were changed by encounters with Jesus. Also, the Advent starts this Sunday. So we'll be looking at love, peace, joy, hope, and at Jesus being the light. We also will have our choir, Lord willing, singing for you some each service. So we have some great things that are being planned. Look for the announcements on our websites and Facebook pages and just get excited about what the Lord is going to be doing at Maysville Church of Christ in Christian Union. I know many of you have been asking about my health. I am currently taking the chemo that is by pill twice a day. And I'm also having radiation. Though That is on five days each week for five weeks. So we have about one week of that in, even though it was two weeks because of holidays and various things, we are getting in one week. So we still have four weeks of that. So far, I have been blessed, uh, very few side effects, and so far they have been manageable. So tonight, we welcome you to put your feet under the table and enjoy the service in song, and then come back and enjoy it message that has to do with one at a time, one at a time. Good evening. This is Pastor Wilma. I want to just remind you again that each Sunday morning uh, during December, we'll have the Advent candle, the choir, someone portraying a life changed by Jesus, Messages about the nativity, working on the uh, David, Dr. David Jeremiah, why the nativity. And on Sunday evening, um, I was influenced by studying some of Kyle Eidelman's one at a time. So I want us to look at how Jesus ministered specifically each Sunday night in December. Join us. Tonight, we want to look at number one in looking at how Jesus wants you and I to, to be influenced by the Bible. Something came up in one of our Bible studies recently when Brother Mike quoted a statistic that most people, like 99% of the people who hear a message on the average cannot tell you anything about that message within 72 hours. So by Wednesday, most people have forgotten the message. Now that tells me there's not enough pulling the message to them. Um, I've suggested 
that we start pledging ourselves to learning the Bible, that we bring a, a notebook, we bring a pencil or a pen, and we write a few notes that indicate to us where should we go read the scripture? What are the things we heard that we need to apply that we can do better? And that is, my friend, why we go to the house of the Lord. We should stir ourselves up out of sleep. Uh, it is not a place to go eat and drink. It is not a place to go and, and take a nap. It is not a place to go and, and show the Lord that you are not interested in him. It is a place to come into the house of the Lord and, and to worship, to come ready to let Jesus know, I believe you're the best teacher that ever lived. I believe that you are my Lord, my Savior. You're the bread. You're the living water. There are hundreds of things that you are in my life, including my Savior. And I want to come in here ready to receive. I, I want to be prepared to sit down and to activate my mind and my heart and my soul and be ready to receive whatever you've given the minister of the hour. So today we're going to start on the idea of Jesus wants you out of your comfort zone. He wants you to be able to focus from all the things going on around you, to be able to focus to one person. And you'll see that he does this over and over and over as you read his life in the scriptures. It's another thing we want to ask you to do. Go home, read the scriptures, talk about them, discuss them. Today, I, I have a, a handout. I can post it if you would like to see it. I can take pictures of it and post the pictures. I have a handout that describes the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I, I don't want you to just do what the world says do, but I want you to do according to my teachings. And my teachings are going to focus on the solution. And, and, and sometimes in situations where you want to focus completely on you, I want you to focus out there to the one that could be changed if you use the solution that I give you. And his solutions to some of these problems that society has isn't as easy as uh, turn over to page three and write, I love Jesus. Uh, the solutions are to uh, get back to what he said would work when you're dealing with people, when you're dealing with God, when you're dealing with people. You remember he said to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he wants us to practice the teachings, not as the world. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> to practice the teachings, not as the world practices them, but to practice the Word of God. Now, the Word of God is exact and is to be applied exactly the way that He says it. But you and I aren't exact creatures, and we mess up and we sin. And we get into relationships with people that are fiery and angry and uh, out of the word of God. So Jesus wants us to look at how can you focus one at a time, just one at a time. Focus on a person. You, 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 can't, you can't focus on a, a, a 5,000 people at once. We like to think we can multitask. But we can't. We have to stop doing this and do this. We may do it a little quicker, but we must, the brain does this, and then the brain does this. So we can't focus on all of the situations in our life at one time. We have to stop and focus on one. Do you remember the many, many times the Lord would be uh, in uh, a situation like uh, the day that he was with a crowd, a, a huge crowd. 
and Jarius came running to him and, and, and said, you know, my, I have, I have a sickness at home. My daughter, she's at the point of death. Would you come and, and, and touch my daughter? And the Lord said, yes, I'll come. And as he started, uh, there was an interruption. Uh, someone touched him and he felt the healing virtue go out of him. And what had happened was a lady that had an issue of blood for 12 years and had been hemorrhaging 12 years, gone to doctor after doctor after doctor, couldn't find the solution. And she was just getting worse all the time. And when she heard about Jesus, she came into the crowd and she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, so she slipped into the crowd and touched his clothes. And when that belief that Jesus could heal her touched Jesus, he felt the power of, of, of the Son of God, of the Savior, of the healer. He felt that power come out of him and go into her and to heal that hemorrhaging. And so he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, look at this crowd. How can we know that? He said, no, I mean somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. Somebody got virtue out of me. Somebody was healed. And then she came forward trembling and told what her story. And in the meantime, a servant from Jairus' house had come and said, the child is dead. You may as well... Uh, just not bother the master. There's no need bringing him home. She's gone. And the Lord said, just believe. Just believe. And he went on with Jairus. And when he got there, the bottom line of the story is he focused on that 12-year-old girl, not on the crowds that were doubting, saying she's dead, uh, laughing at him for thinking he could raise her up, um, he ignored all of those things and he focused just as he had on the lady who had touched the hem one at a time. He had focused on her. Uh, now he's focusing uh, not on Jarius calling him, but he's focusing on the girl herself. And now he goes to the girl and he speaks for her to get up. And she does. And then he tells them, feed her. Give her something to eat. You see, Jesus never concentrates on the problem. He never concentrates on the crowds and on what the world says, but he concentrates on the solution that he has heard in heaven of what did my father teach about how to really get rid of these problems. The, 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 the crowds around you will say one thing, but the father would say, that needs a deeper touch. Let's look at some of those. In Matthew 5, there are six times that the Lord said, you have heard it said, or it has been said. In other words, you, you hear how to correct these. You, you hear what you're supposed to do. But now I'm going to give you some advice. Now, the first one of those, and I'm, I'm just going to move through them rather quickly. And, and remember, the goal that Jesus has is for you to learn the real solution and how to apply the real solution, which requires that you change how you respond to that problem. And so, therefore, you will be changed into a person that can focus on one person at a time to help them with the solution. <laughs> Uh, in, in verse 21, he said, you have heard, you know, you're going to hear that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill will be in danger of the judgment. He said, now you've heard killing is a serious thing and you'll be in danger of judgment if you kill. But I say unto you, He's going to tell you the steps that could lead to killing. He's going to tell you how to look in a child and see stages that you need to learn to help them with. Uh, to look at the people in your family, people you work with. When you start seeing these signs of things, that's when you need to start praying for them and sharing with them what Jesus said in a 
after a prayerful time and in the right way, the right time, that let the Lord be in it. And for you to learn, when you get mad at someone, going out and killing them is not a solution. Think about that. When you kill someone, you've taken their life and they went into eternity the way they are. And now you are a murderer and you have got hatred. You you became such an angry, hateful, full of anger, full of twisted thoughts until you thought killing was the answer. So therefore, you're in a very bad state yourself and will need lots of forgiveness to be straightened out. He said, I tell you, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you're in danger of judgment. You see, it needs to stop before you ever get to killing. It needs to stop back here at anger. When you're angry with someone without a cause, I, I see people sometimes get so angry in a, a motor vehicle and they don't even know the people in the next vehicle. Uh, we witnessed just coming from church to our home uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we were driving along at the speed limit was 55. We were running like 58. We were doing all the law allowed and we came up to a, a, a four-way stop and there was a semi-truck driver behind us that was running much faster than the 58 or 9. He did not want to stop for that red light, yellow already, and he was not going to stop. And so therefore, he just came in and just started cutting in to the traffic. And had it not been for the fact that everybody was alert and cars stopped and allowed me to stop, he came in in front of me. The cars in front started speeding up to let him get in. Uh, there was car. There were cars in the other lane, and, and it took everybody there to avert all of us being in an accident because evidently he was just angry. I'm going to go through this red light. I'm not stopping this drug. We have to watch the anger that we have. Uh, that's whether we're being waited on at a fast food or having to wait in line somewhere. We need to curb the anger. And then he said, uh, if if you say reka, which means you go around calling somebody, you empty, worthless thing, he said, you're in danger of the council. And then he said, if you say thou fool, why you dull, stupid thing, that you're in danger of hellfire. So what Jesus is saying, that in order to focus on the person, you, you need to watch your anger long before it ever gets to, I'll kill somebody. You need to not speak to them like they're empty or worthless. Don't speak to them like you think they're dull or stupid. Don't be angry with them just because you're frustrated. You have to learn to start dealing with your own self. And the process of dealing with yourself and bringing yourself in to the right behaviors will change you. And you're going to become more and more suitable to help others. Number two, and I know I have to move faster than that, don't I? Uh, number two said, he said, you have heard. I, I'm just stating this uh, in simple terms. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, now, of old time there was a law, and there's a commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So again, Jesus is saying, it's not just that act, the physical act between two bodies that is adultery. But adultery is not being faithful to the man, to the woman she's married to, or the woman being faithful to the man she's married to, but rather instead of concentrating on that marriage and the home, they are looking at other people. Uh, and today it's, it's so easy because so many people are naked, um, even commercials, almost everything. But he says, don't let your mind start down that path. 
Don't, don't, don't get yourself to adultery because you're going to stop back here. You're going to stop back here. You're going to start saying, oh, you know, look at that woman. She really looks good, the man says. And then the second, the, the Holy Spirit's going to say, you should not be looking at her. You should say you're sorry and ask the Lord to forgive you and, and don't do that. Uh, you need to concentrate on your relationship. You need to concentrate on your home, your marriage. And then Jesus follows that up uh, with a, a comment on divorce, number three of six. He says, it has been said. Now, it, it's commonly said out there, uh, whosoever put away his wife, just give her a writing of divorcement. Just, just have the lawyer draw up a writing, you're divorced, and hand it to them, and there you are, you're done. He said, but I say unto you that if you put away your wife, saving for the cause of fornication. Now, if the person has broken the marriage vows, he says, saving for that cause. You, you cause, if you put a person away and they're not guilty of having committed fornication, then you're causing them to commit adultery. And whosoever marries them that's divorced committeth adultery. You're, you're breaking the marriage vows and you're causing each other not to have that partner. This man doesn't have this wife. This wife doesn't have this husband. And they're broken apart. And it's not long before just human nature, people start looking for another husband, another wife. And, and in today's world, um, he doesn't address it here, but the, just the move in, move out, move in, move out. And, and therefore, you've, you've committed fornication and adultery, and that's, the, that's the, the foundation of your home. Now, let me be clear about something. Jesus would tell you, deal with where you are now. Don't, don't go back behind the cross and start digging up things. You can't fix what you did 40 years ago. Or 20 years ago. You can't fix what you did last night. So you must begin with today. Whatever home you have today. If it's not a home of husband and wife. You need to get a husband and wife. Uh, if you have husband and wife. Then you need to start building on that relationship. And not be looking for how can I break this relationship and start over again. Number four. He said, again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear. You shouldn't swear falsely, or, or you shouldn't recant yourself after you've sworn and then change it. But you should perform unto the Lord thine oath. And Jesus said, but I say unto you, swear not at all. Just, just don't swear. Don't go around saying, I swear this or that. Don't swear by heaven, it's God's throne. Don't swear by the earth, it's his footstool. <laughs> Don't swear by Jerusalem, it belongs to the great king. Don't swear by your head, you can't make one hair black or white. Uh, just let your communication, rather than I swear this and I swear that. Don't do that, the Lord said. He said, rather say yes, no. Now, that one really takes some practice. Not the I swear part for me, but it took a lot of work. Um, and I still have to work on it at, at answering yes and letting it be. But I, I find exactly what he's saying is true. If I say yes, and I just say yes, that I really, 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 uh, don't have to worry about the other stuff I said. You see, he said, whatsoever more than that cometh of evil. It's just going to cause trouble. Say your yes, say your no, and let it go. Number five, he said, you have heard it said an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, when you do that, you're not resisting evil. You know, if you say something to me and I say something worse, you punch me and I punch you harder. He said, that's never going to solve anything. But what you need to do is rather if they smite you on the right cheek, if they just, bam, hit you on the right cheek, turn the left one. Of course, there's scripture that says a soft answer turneth away wrath. 
and says if someone sues you and they take your coat, give them your cloak too. And if somebody says, you're going to go with me a mile, you go that second mile. Uh, soldiers in that day can tell them they had to cl uh, carry stuff for a mile. And, and, and they, were, they had to do it. But he said, if you go that first mile because you're commanded to, go the second mile to show them you have a good spirit. Again, you hear what he's saying? Don't let things get to, to the place that they're wrong. Start backing off those processes in you and doing the right thing. Number six, our last point. Ye have heard, all this in Matthew 5, that it hath been said thou shalt love the neighbor and hate the enemy. He said, but I say unto you. Now, how are you ever going to get rid of an enemy by hating him? He's telling you that's not going to work. Love your enemy. Somebody curses you, bless them. Just get in the habit instead of talking bad about them. And it, it takes time to do this, people. It takes time because we're human. Now, the Lord could fix us just like that, but we're human. We have to learn to not, not, not prattle on all the time, to not talk about everything that we know. We have to learn to stop it and, and, and to love our enemy, to bless them that curse us. Do good to them that hate you. Somebody that you know doesn't like you, uh, speak something good about them. Speak something good to them. Uh, uh, find some way to say something good. Talk about one of their children. Uh, what a great child. Um, talk about, you know, uh, I see you have a black car. I really like black cars too. Uh, but, but talk good things and pray for them, which despitefully use you and persecute you. There's the answer to pray for them. Now, the Lord wants to show me my shortcomings. In order for me to be a, a, a the Christian that I ought to be, I, I need to understand that the world says, this is what you ought to do. But the Lord said, no, you need to stop it way back here. You, you need to stop it back here. Uh, how, to, how to stop a divorce is, is pray about who you're going to marry and wait until you are married to be man and wife. And pick a husband or a wife that is an honorable, virtuous person that believes in the Lord and goes to church. Pick a person that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you can trust them. They've proved it to you in your courtship years. Clean, holy, moral courtship times. He said, in order for us to help people, in order for me to see people one at a time, and, and to encourage them, I must start working on me. Matthew 5, Jesus gave six things. And he said, start pulling back how you react to people. Then when you're with people, you can see them one at a time. And you'll be able to go talk to them. Because you're not trying to, uh, you're not thinking, well, this one's stupid. And that one makes me angry. And, and this one... Uh, did this or that one, you know, but now you're thinking those are all people the Lord loves and I'm working on me so that I can respond to this one and that one and this one and be like Jesus. God bless you. I pray that you will, I pray that you will work on this matter, that you will get this material out of Matthew 5 and that you'll work. May the Lord bless your evening.